we are. A new day of writing, creating, setting free. I talk with so many people around the world about their art and about that moment of relinquishing. Some like to laugh it off, while others embrace the thought. Once something has been turned over to the receiver, the next step is to find your way back to another day of creative expression. Now, so many around me admit of their struggles in the way of keeping their art close to their heart. They enjoy the work and the energy required to fulfill the vision, but to put it in front of an outsider isn't a journey worth talking about or taking. They fear judgment. We all do. It's part of the process of setting art free, but not everybody is going to be warmed up and loving about it. People judge as a way to fit in, forming opinions of your own. Art is extremely easy to talk about by loving it or avoiding its presence. Art in your life. Do you set it free or is it in the box up there in the attic that someone is going to find after you've passed? And then we're going to assume what the history of that art is. Hmm. Hey, it's Arrow. This is the Daily Mess, a chronological walk through an everyday world. I am a daily writer. Thoughts. There's so much in thoughts. Sometimes they're good. Sometimes not so good. Sometimes they inspire. Other times, ooh, get a shovel. We're digging a hole. This is the Daily Mess. The tree next door unexpectedly fell. It's one of those moments where there were no signals, no signs of weakness. The 30-foot trunk with its limbs have been called to the ground. For a few months, I've been hearing this creaking sound in the forest, and I just assumed it was another tree. There was no wind. There was no storm. The soil is well taken care of. No other trees were even leaning on it. You wake up before the sunrise, and you take note that something is missing from the sky. And it's like, voila, whoa, it's right there on the forest floor. This forest isn't new to the world. The majority of these trees were here long before the big machines and the men with hammers came to create homes for future families. My wife has been here for 35 years. We've seen a lot of trees stumbling to their knees, most of them deeper into the forest, not in the front yard like this one. Lessons to be learned. Taking notes while getting prepared for the next tree that will fall. I learned so much from trees in the way that they are some of the greatest storytellers. Trees and rocks. Each of them hold their own source of energy. And when a tree such as this falls to the ground like it did last night, sometime we don't know. We didn't even hear the crash. Something that large and we heard nothing. Maybe it fell because it was time to feed that part of the world. Now the neighbor... He'll cut it up and he'll put it back in the forest, but it won't be in that particular area. I wish I were a tree so that I could stand so tall into the sky and overlook these places that need the moisture, that need the feeding from what will become my leaves and then my roots as I fall to the ground. What do I learn from a tree? A tree is very giving. A tree that was planted grows up into the air creates an umbrella for shade, but when it sacrifices its life, it becomes a page, something that I write on. And from that page come words that I'm sharing. I'm planting a thought inside of you. Yes, it hurts like hell when these trees that you've been with for 35 years fall because it's over. That's one of the main reasons why I started a new podcast called Thanks for Being a Part of the Conversation. I'm going to spend the next year or two going from different places in this forest to share the story. Because I've been here so long, nobody in the future will have anything to hold until someone says, look, there's something you should know. And that's my invitation for you today. Find your place where you go, hey, um, you need to know something. Taking your experiences and turning it into energy. Don't just fall to the forest floor. Grow forward. I'm Arrow, and that's The Daily Mess.